Hey everyone, Thomas here with For Real Movie News and Reviews, and I am joined today by Lawrence Michael Levine, director of Black Bear, uh, a psychological thriller that is streaming at the 2020 Vancouver International Film Festival. Uh, Lawrence, I am so happy to be talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out to do this. Uh, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I watched uh, Black Bear and um, like I kind of mentioned to you, I, I really, really enjoyed the film and, and what it's, uh, what it does psychologically, not only just with the characters and how it's kind of a psychological game with the characters, but also with the audience. I, I think it was very well done, very well put together. And, uh, and I'm happy that it's screening at the Vancouver International Film Festival. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I was in trying to think about how to discuss this film. I, I want to be able to discuss things um, so that people who haven't seen the film can, can enjoy a little bit of our discussion. But I also want to talk about things about the film that, that might be spoilers and probably better for people who have seen the film. So I'm going to kind of break this interview up into those two parts, okay? Sounds good. Um, so I guess I want to start off with, it, it's probably, I think you'll probably be able to explain better than I am. What is this movie a, more better than I can? What is this movie about? How would you explain this to someone who, who, um, who has just kind of heard the title and might be hearing the buzz? Um, when you say what it's about, do you mean, uh, like the plot? Because, um, or, or uh, <laughs> are you talking about thematically? Let's talk thematically, because like I said, I don't want to give too much of the plot away. I do think it's one of those movies that the less you know going into it, the better. Um, that was certainly my experience, and it was such a, a, such a great experience to, to not know a whole lot going into it. But thematically, what, what would you say about the film? Um, in some ways, I would say that my interpretation of the film or what I think it's about is probably is not very different from a, a viewer who would see it or um, in other words, I think my, the, the way that, the way this movie came out of me was an interpretation. I, I would be doing an interpretation on something that came out of me just like you would mm -hmm. um, because I didn't start out with any notion of, I wanna make a movie about um, I really, I, the process was much more intuitive and I think it's more of a snapshot of certain maybe unconscious, subconscious tensions or um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard question to answer, but I feel like the theme <laughs> that emerged clearly, but, but this to me only emerged once I had written the script. Could I say, could I look at it and say, what was, what's this all about? Um, and so in some ways, I think it's similar to what you would, what you would do. You watch the movie okay. and you have to think about what it's about. I have to do the same <laughs> thing, you know? But I think yeah. the theme that emerged for me was creativity and what it, what it can be and what it can mean and kind of where it comes from and right. the relationship between creativity and life and um, how separate they are um, mm -hmm. at all. Um, those yeah. were the kind of themes that, that the movie ended up exploring. But again, it was no conscious intention of mine to explore those themes. The story kind of emerged out of me really intuitively um, and was not consciously, consciously constructed. I think that that's so fascinating because I do think that it's stitched together so well, so in, so intentionally, I guess. And maybe that's just kind of how, what you're talking about with it being kind of an authentic, um, organic kind of story that came out of you and the way that it did, it wasn't pre-planned, it just kind of happened, which is great. Um, I think one of the themes that I noticed in the movie is, is like the lengths an artist is willing to go to um, in order to uh, like, um, to get the best out of their work, right? Is that something that that you um, experience personally when you're creating like a film? Very, very much so. Uh, but but there's all elements of sadism in, or, <laughs> or well, I would say sadomasochism. I think. Wait, which is the one where you hurt yourself? That's sadomasochism, right? Right, right, right. 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. But. I think so. I, you know, I there's a relationship. I have a tendency toward uh, work, I guess workaholism maybe is the mm -hmm. word. I don't know if, you, if that's, I don't, I don't know if that's a real thing or not. But I mean, I, I can understand that. I certainly, I, I'm a perfectionist. And so I put a lot of time and effort into any work I do. And, and that's just how it is. And I spend a lot of time and hours uh, doing it and, and putting everything that I can into it. So I, I kind of, I understand that kind of workaholic uh, uh, aspect or nature in creating things. Yeah, I, I think it's a tendency to, I have a tendency to, uh, well, well, let's just put it this way. I'm not always certain that my ch choice to be an artist and the behaviors that I indulge in to create work are necessarily healthy for me. Okay. And by the same token, I'm not sure they're often healthy for the people around me. Huh. And um, so this is a constant thing that I wonder about in my life and think about, and I have to make a conscious effort to have balance in my life and not to, not to put um, my creativity and my artistic impulses first. Um, you know, that's something that I have to consciously do. So if there's any, but I think if there's anyone who, who's, um, and you know, you can have a deeper conversation about this, but uh, mm -hmm. because the notion of a tortured artist is sort of a cliche at this point, right. uh, but the artistic choice can be a difficult one. The choice to be an artist uh, or mm -hmm. creative person can be a difficult one. Um, and, uh, and it, and it has been for me. It's yeah. That's, difficult, that's actually... It's been a difficult path. And I think the movie reflects that. I mean, I, I don't treat people on set the way that, you know, or, or I don't, I don't behave the way that certain people in this movie do, but the idea of stopping at nothing to create work is familiar to me. And yeah, comes, that's. I think that that's such a, a fascinating thing to be so, to be self aware of, um, just because it, it is. I guess it sounds like you um, you know there's so much uncertainty. I guess there's uncertainty a lot when it comes to when it comes to art, and and that's reflected in the movie. I, I think I, we can say it, it, there's a component to the movie where the artists in the film are kind of like struggling artists, right? Like there's uh, this component where um, you know they're they're trying to do what they enjoy doing with art, um, but aren't aren't quite finding the success that they want. Um, so I think that I think it's safe to say that without spoiling anything. Um, and so it's so fascinating to hear you talk about your own experience with art and how how that shows up in the film, uh, which which is really cool. Um, but I guess speaking of the characters in the movie, you have you have a, a stellar cast. I think the movie works so well uh, for me just because of the performances that are put on by uh, your your three leading um, actors, um, Aubrey Plaza, Chris Rabbit, and uh, Sarah Gaddon. I think it's how you Ooh. pronounce your name, Gaddon. Um, yeah, so it's it's a a really really great cast, really great chemistry um, with them and. And again, I have to talk about this without spoiling anything, but um, I do want to know how that that cast was assembled. Um, I think you had, I think I read that you had history with Aubrey Plaza before um, people knew her on Parks and Recreation. Um, how did this this um, Wait, what did cast you, come? What did you just say? Uh, uh, you, so I, I'm pretty sure I read that you had like a history or, or encounters with Aubrey Plaza before Parks and Recreation. Before Parks and Recreation, that is true. Before, yes, okay. I wonder um, if that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to clarify that because uh, I, um, it, most people do know her from Parks and Recreation. Um, and so, you know, I guess it, it's interesting that she now gets to work with you or you get to work with her. Um, but how did this cast come together is, is really what I, uh, is what I'm getting at with the question. Um, it's true. I was part, I studied improv and did improv in New York City at the same time that she was doing it. Um, and, but I didn't, I didn't know her. I did a show with her. I, well, I, my group performed after her group. So I, I, I 
I'd watched her perform a few times. I don't think she was aware of me, but I, I, right. I had no conception. She was brilliant um, mm -hmm. in that context. Uh, and, um, but I had no notion I was going to work with her right? mm -hmm. or have to spoke together or, or that we didn't speak or anything. But um, yeah, I met her years later through a mutual friend. Uh, we became friendly. And then eventually I worked on a TV show with her, with the mutual friend who introduced us, Joe Swanberg. Um, and uh, so we did his TV show together and uh, we got to know each other better on that show and uh, had a good time working together. And I saw how serious she was about what she did and how dedicated she was to the quality of, of um, the things she was working on. And, um, I thought it'd be great to work with her. So I, I wrote a movie with her in mind, um, hoping that she would do it. And, and luckily she did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And and, the, uh, was that the question? Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, that, so that was it's so cool. Specifically, yeah. And then right. And this, I think it's it's cool how like how the series of events that happened. I, I mean, I, it's important to clarify that it wasn't like a, a long term friendship that happened and then ended up with this. Is you guys kind of encountered each other at one point and then your paths crossed again, which is which is a really cool way for everything to kind of fall fall into place. Um, but also, you know, uh, Christopher and Sarah, they, they, I mean, they're also great performers and are, and are doing really great things with their career right now as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, they, so Aubrey, um, Aubrey's agent um, got behind the project once he read it uh, and he uh, helped me get Sarah and, uh, and Chris attached as well. They're in the same agency. So he did. Um, he did a bunch of work behind the scenes to to help get the script to them, and um, and then they wanted to do it as well. So that was I hadn't met either of them before, although uh, I was definitely a fan of both of them, and I, I wanted uh, both both of them were my first choices for the role. So I did awesome. everybody that I, all three of the people that I wanted ended up in the movie. So that's great, and that's unusual. You know, usually schedules it is. Don't work out, or people somebody passes, or whatever. But mm -hmm. but in this case, I was just lucky. Yeah, lucky, and I guess intuitive as well, because like I said, they 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 really work together well in in making these dysfunctional characters work. Uh, you know, it's it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, but you expect that with good actors, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and yeah kudos on bringing that team together and also them working well. Um, so the location, this this um, movie takes place at a lake house um, and it's it's a gorgeous property. Um, tell me more about how you guys um, chose to film there um, and yeah, and how all that came came to happen. Well, the, the genesis of the movie aside from my having worked with Aubrey, also a friend of mine sent me a bunch of photos of his country house and was like, you should make a movie here, you know? Like my family has this place. I think it'd be a great place to shoot a movie. So I was like, I looked over the photos and I thought, oh yeah, this, this would be a good place to shoot a movie. So with that in my head, I, I wrote something to take place in that specific country house based on the pictures. But when it came time, when we were finally ready to make the movie, uh, that place was no longer available. <laughs> so I, have this, I had written it for this very specific place and um, it had all these attributes that, that were, were hard to replicate. And the only place we found was the one you see in the movie. It, it, it has, it, the, the, the property needed to have three separate structures and from each of these structures, a lake needed the same lake needed to be visible and this was the only property that we looked at that had that attribute um it had the disadvantage from being about eight hours from new york city and three hours from albany three hours from montreal so it was really remote it was like right in the middle of that around backs it was very remote eight miles in on a dirt road it was off the grid there was no wi-fi very little phone service on the grounds and it was solar powered and the solar generator was not in good shape, it kept breaking. So there was a price to pay for that, that location, but. 
so. interesting so so were there significant like um uh, production challenges because of that that change in in plans yes <laughs> i guess that's i guess every production has production challenges but maybe what no, i'm getting not at like is this one. not like this <laughs> what do you think was the hardest part of, what was the hardest part about fil filming this movie the schedule was difficult. It was only 19 days. Uh, the house was too big and had too many windows for us to tent. <laughs> so we had to shoot everything at night. Uh, the whole movie, most wow. of the movie takes place at night. So we had to shoot only nights and mm -hmm. nights only eight hours long in the summer. So it's not like we could do any overtime. We had eight hours to shoot. And if we didn't get what we needed in those eight hours, we didn't get, we weren't gonna get it because I had no reshoots. I had no ability to do any reshoots. And like I said, the power kept going out. This generator was broke, this solar power generator was broken. And eventually we got a, a, a gas burning generator in there to, to help us. But the first week I lost an enormous amount of time to these blackouts. So what was already a very rushed shoot was even more rushed. And communications were difficult. We didn't we didn't have you know what like i said we didn't have wi-fi we didn't have phone service so everything was walkie talkies mm -hmm. um the actors were staying about an hour away from the set because there was no place close by to stay and uh the food was pretty bad <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't very comfortable i mean it's they, almost uh, it's almost like and i guess it's almost like you were filming the film you were filming um, yeah. <laughs> because so much of what you're saying actually happens uh, or is as a component of the narrative in the movie. It's, it's uh, like, it's very interesting to analyze having seen the film. Um, yeah, and, so, and some things were in there in the script, so they seem to have magically created the circumstances that, because we <laughs> found ourselves in the exact circumstance, for example. Right, uh, right. And then some things I were brought in from the shoot we were experiencing as mm -hmm. we were shooting. Interesting, wow. That's really, really cool to know and to get some behind the scenes info on. That's just really great. Um, I would now like to uh, transition into the spoilers part of this conversation. So okay. for anyone watching who hasn't seen Black Bear, definitely check it out. It is streaming um, with the Vancouver International Film Festival on the Real Connect uh, platform until October 7th. I strongly recommend it. Um, and for those who have seen it, let's get into talking more about the details and the plot of, of what's going on with this movie. Um, so if I remember correctly, it's broken up into two stories, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to um, how you decided to, like how these two stories became the, uh, what made this movie. And I also wanna know if there are any other stories that you were thinking about putting, or were these just the two stories that you, that you wanted and always planned for? You know, it's tough to say because, that, like I like I told you, there was very little planning uh, mm -hmm. going on. I, you know, I my I make my living as a screenwriter, and most of the projects that I work on are for hire, uh, mm -hmm. and they're way more conventional. And mm -hmm. so, when I set out to write this script, I was really shaking off a lot of that stuff. I'm just tired of doing you know, when you when you do work for producers or networks or, or production companies, uh, you usually have to sell a pitch and which means that you have to tell them what your plan is. And then you have to show them your outline and they have to approve that. And then you show them drafts and they have to approve those. This, this wasn't like that. I mean, I didn't have any plan at all. I didn't have an outline and have any of these things. I really just just went to my office and started to write intentionally because I wanted to work in this more spontaneous, intuitive way. Um, so really the way that this worked out was me starting getting to know these characters, exploring their dynamics with one another and seeing where those dynamics took me. And then it was always just a question of what, what is the most interesting or surprising thing that could happen next? So I didn't even, 
start out with the intention of doing a movie in two parts or anything like that. I just started to write and my first story came to a culmination and it wasn't a feature length movie. So I thought, well, what's, what could I do next that would make, would be really interesting to see. And it was kind of like, well, I can tell some story that relates to this one in an interesting way. And then a number of options kind of proposed themselves to me. And I, I chose the one that you see in the movie, but, um, you know, it really wasn't a plan to, to do a movie in two parts or anything, anything like that. It was much more every day. I would just go there and go to the office and be like, what's the next most interesting thing that can happen? Mm-hmm. You know? Wow. That's you know, incredible. We could have <laughs> continued linear, linearly from the point that it breaks mm-hmm. into the second half. Mm-hmm. It could have, I could have kept going with the story. You could, you could, after part one, that could have just, but I thought it'd be more interesting. There was some finality that I felt at the end of part one mm-hmm. that I felt like, well, no, I don't want to keep this one going. Mm-hmm. I want to comment on what we just saw and mm-hmm. how can, how can I make that interesting? Or it, it was, and I will say it did come from the character that I created, character of Allison and her life and her issues, all that stuff mm-hmm. that I imagined. Right. I found that two part and a two part structure would be a cool and interesting way to explore that. And um, I'm interested in movies that ask you to, to, to think about them as constructions not just mm-hmm. get wrapped up in the story and the reality of it, but to, to work with a sort of double action where you're wrapped up in the story, but then at certain moments, you're wondering about the, the construct that you're watching and why it's being constructed a certain way. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I don't know. No, that makes total sense. I think it, for me, it was fascinating because again, I went into it not knowing not knowing much about it at all. I, I think a, a friend of mine had said, hey, you know, Black Bear is one I want to see. And I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of that one. Let me go check it out. And so um, that's one of the benefits at, in, in watching films at, at film festivals is you don't have a whole lot of like, um, uh, like media and promotions and everything kind of spoiling things. You get to kind of go into it with a fresh perspective. And so mm-hmm. I did, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I think the every moment that happened, I just like, got more and more invested into how how bizarre it was getting and how um, awkward at times it was and how emotionally draining it is. It's a heavy film, um, but I like that because it does, it, it allowed me as a viewer to spend time in it, like trying to piece together, like what's going on? Who are these characters? Um, there's there's so many mind games going on, like I kind of said, between the characters, but also with the audience. Part one, I have I still have no idea what to believe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. everything everything is so um, y- you don't know who to trust. There's things that are said that are then unsaid or reverted or or um, uh, you know lies, and it's just so fascinating to experience the first time through. But then part two takes a, it seems to take a lot of the components from part one and then kind of rearrange them. Yeah. Um, which, which just put the movie, it, it would, and again, I kind of, you, you're talking about not going to a linear fashion in part two. I absolutely respect that decision because it, it does really um, lend itself to, uh, to that reconstruction and kind of piecing it together as far as like, the components of these characters and not just this linear story. Yeah. Or have I made it clear that I really like this movie? <laughs> um, so uh, I even lost what I was, oh, my next question. Um, it it kind of gets back to your experience with um, your experience in life and filmmaking and what happens in this film. We discussed the fact that, you know, uh, you've experienced being like a uh, an artist that's unsure about your art, and that convey is conveyed in the, in a couple of the characters. Um, 
you talk about production issues and small uh, filming windows, which also is a component of, uh, mm -hmm. of the plot in this movie. I was very curious as to if you have worked with a difficult actor or maybe a difficult crew member before, because that's a major part of the story. And so with us talking about how much you've experienced that made into the film, is that something that you've had to, that you've experienced or, or uh, encountered as a filmmaker? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I've also been a difficult actor. I mean, I've been on all sides of that. I've been on all sides of that particular dynamic. But unfortunately, I'm not, I, I'm not really at liberty to tell stories yep. about that. But of yeah, course. No, I, I, <laughs> you know, the idea of difficult actors um, is an interesting one. Um, actors have a very vulnerable job. Uh, and the idea that they're difficult is, is an anti, it's kind of like an anti-actor perspective because I think a lot of people don't really understand what actors do. Um, they get, they have to get to a really, um, emotional place. And some of those places are not, uh, enjoyable. And it's not so easy to, you know, you're doing a scene where you just found out that your, your father died or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to cultivate a mood of, of grief, or, for example, if that's your reaction to the death of your father. And that's not a pleasant place to be or a pleasant mood to sustain. And it's sort of unrealistic for people to expect that an actor can feel his deep grief and then snap out of it and just be a lovely guy to talk to at lunch. So, uh, or, you know, so I think, you know, I think actors get a bad rap for being difficult. Um, so I think what I would say is you find yourself in difficult situations with actors and nobody ever talks about the director. I mean, what if the director is difficult? What if the production itself is, is terribly difficult and trying on people? I think people talk about difficult actors. And it, it's a sort of shallow kind of conversation. Um, yeah. But movie sets are challenging places. Um, people are working under, high uh, under a lot of pressure. Time constraints are real, even on big films. And they're exploring often upsetting emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're, they're tricky, they're tricky places and trick, tricky emotional places to navigate. So that's how, that's, yeah. that's what I would say. Awesome. That, and that's a very, a very tactful and, and understandable response. Uh, you, you make a lot of sense there. And I think that again, what's really cool about this conversation is it gives so much context to experiencing the film, uh, just kind of hearing your experience with all these things that, that end up in the narrative. Um, it's really great. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're come, we've either come up to or have passed our half hour and I don't want to keep you for too long. Um, uh, but I do want to know uh, if there's anything that you want people, since we're in the spoiler section, is there anything that you want people who maybe have seen the film or are familiar with the film to know or, or take away from the film? I don't, I don't want anybody to take anything specific away uh, from the film. Um, I hoped to create a variety of reactions that would then be interesting for people to talk about, you know, after the film or think about by themselves after the film. I was not trying to say one particular thing. Um, I was just trying to explore some characters that felt real to me um, and whose problems uh, I found interesting and, and related to. Uh, so there's not, no one thing that I wanted people to take away from the movie. That's the one thing I would say I want people to take away from That's this. So that, that, yeah, that, <laughs> that, you know, this was about characters and I wanted to pre present them People in life that you meet are, most of the time, are mysterious, un unknowable, contradictory, complex, uh, 
and paradoxical and um, and I, I just I wanted to explore real human beings and um, and have people think and talk about them perhaps critically or lovingly or how whatever their reactions are I think is totally mm -hmm. legitimate. like yeah. a dream like you're analyzing a dream that's great and and hopefully people do I, I think that um, like I've said, I think it was a very well put together film. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed what um, the decisions you've made with it and uh, and the team you put together for it. everything. I just really, really like this movie. Um, my last, my, <laughs> yeah, of course. My last question uh, is, is the future of the film. What are the plans? Do you guys have uh, any ideas about distribution or, or I guess any, any plans yes. for distribution or whatever? Yeah, it's being distributed by a company called Momentum. Um, they've been great to work with and they've done a lot of good films. So uh, happy to be with them. And the movie comes out December 4th. I think it's gonna play some theaters, but but obviously because of the uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. not too many. And um, it's mostly gonna stream. So I think it's mm -hmm. day and date, December 4th is when it comes out. Awesome, that's really great to know. And I think we since you mentioned know, that, yeah. yeah, right. North America is still a democracy. But... Right. <laughs> Fingers crossed, who knows. Um, but since you mentioned that, I think that that is something, if this is playing in the theater, that's something that I wish I could have experienced for this film was to have seen it in a theater just because of the types of emotional reactions it made me feel. Um, it would have been interesting to experience that in in an audience and kind of have this collective experience of how how this movie is un unraveling. So you didn't see it in the theater? I did not, unfortunately. No, here, uh -huh. here in Washington, they're very, very locked down with theater. Well, I, I guess, it's, I mean, this is at the Vancouver Film Festival, but I can't get across the border, everything's streaming. Um, most of Washington theaters are shut down, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, right. But, uh, if, if, if it ever does play in a theater near me, I would I would jump at the opportunity to to go see it with a with an audience. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a big sadness for me that that it, it isn't playing theaters. I just, mm -hmm. um, I think in particular this movie is a, is one that you you want to see in the dark with other people because mm -hmm. absolutely, are, yeah. So and and maybe maybe that's what when uh, you know maybe we can't get to theaters not all of us but when December fourth comes around, you know you gather your friends who are super into like heavy, heavy, like, you know, critically thinking films and, and watch it together, have a discussion um, afterward. So cool. Well, uh, Lawrence, thank you again for this interview. This has really been amazing. I'm going to have to go watch Black Bear again. Uh, now that we've had this discussion. <laughs> Thanks for the conversation. I appreciate it. Of course, um, to our listeners and viewers, um, we, uh, like I said, um, uh, Black Bear is currently streaming at the Vancouver International Film Festival um, until October 7th. And as we now know, it will uh, hopefully be available uh, to you by December 4th. And I look forward to uh, more people seeing it and, uh, and hopefully having this.